I got involved in watches sometime around 2015. That's about three years after the Black Bay was introduced. And by that stage, on social media, people were already clambering to get the new Tudor Submariner. In 2022, just a couple of days ago, Tudor released the 39mm version of their Pelagos, their most technical diver. And I think in many ways, this is the 2022 version of a Tudor Submariner. We'll talk about why on the other side of the intro. Okay, so first off, welcome to the channel. I'm Pete McConville. I tend to look at watches in a slightly different way than most other people. If you would like to look at watches, the industry, collecting, etc., a little bit differently, like and subscribe and you'll catch more of me rabbiting on on this channel. Okay, so now let's talk about the Tudor Pelagos 39 and in particular why I think it is kind of the modern Tudor Submariner. What is it? It is... By name, a 39mm version of the previously 43mm Pelagos. The Pelagos, though, is a very technical diver. It's the Rolex Sea Dweller, if you like, of the uh, Tudor range. And what we've seen in the bringing up with the 39 is kind of the Sea Dweller to Submariner shift. Um, the water resistance has got smaller, going from 300 to 200 metres. The helium escape valve is gone. Uh, there's a little bit of text missing. The complexity of the dial with the indice insets is gone with a much cleaner dress look. Speaking of dress look, you can't ignore the fact that the Met, the mat dial and bezel of the original Pelagos have gone. And what we have now is a much more dress diver oriented brushed sunburst finish so that's really the changes that you've got going from the old Pelagos to the new you don't have to guess what Tudor is trying to achieve with these uh, changes and with this watch they're very clear about it in their marketing material this is a watch intended to take you from the resort dive reef to the resort casino. It is a dive to Daiquiri's watch. They make that absolutely clear in all the marketing materials. So how have they gone in making that? Well, you know what? I've got to give them a tip of the hat and a little bit of a golf clap. I think they've done a really good job. I think in many ways, the Pelagos 39 is the epitome of the modern dress diver. Handsome, unspectacular, not really uh, special in any way, but unobtrusive, inoffensive, a little bit dressy, but not too much, very competent, but not, not overemphasizing sort of the things that can do, well-priced, well-specced, all in all, you know, this is kind of the perfect dress diver for 2022. So as I said, golf clap for Tudor on that one. So what do I think of this watch? I don't like it very much, but that's not a reflection on the designers and, and their ability to achieve a good-looking watch. It's simply a watch that's not designed for me. What Tudor have done for this watch is a little bit similar to what uh, Breitling did with their Super Ocean a couple of months ago. There, Breitling took a very technical, very hardcore diver in their old Super Ocean and made it more casual and fun. They very much, though, looked at taking it from hardcore diving more to kind of what I'll call boards and beers. Much more casual. You go out surfing in the afternoon, wearing the watch, come back and then hang out by the fire on the beach wearing a new Breitling Super Ocean. With the new Tudor, you jump in the resort boat, you go out to the artificial reef, you dive on that reef with your dive master. You all get back on the boat later, have a quick shower, slap on the same watch, and then go to the resort casino and grab some cocktails. That's how those two watches kind of fit. That's how they've been changed. I'm much more of a boards and beers than a daiquiris and dive kind of guy. The Super Ocean is my vibe, not so much this. As I said, that doesn't make this watch a fail. It just means I'm not the target market. 
I said before I'll finish up, but now I'm actually going to do something else. I want one more minute of your time. And that is to quickly talk about the difference in my reaction and I think much of the internet's reaction to this watch and the previous Tudor release, the Ranger. This watch, even like people, even for people like me that don't love this watch, we're, we're seeing it quite positively. Whereas for the Ranger, you could argue that the same way, it was quite a worthy watch, just not aimed at me, got a much more negative response. And I've kind of spent a little while thinking about what that is. And I think it comes down to the two H's of homage and hype. The Ranger was A, very homage and B, very, very hyped. Both of which meant that when it dropped and it wasn't for someone, in this case for me, that bred a sense of disappointment. Unlike that, unlike that, the Pelagos is absolutely nothing but a Tudor and it dropped out of the sky. We didn't see it coming. So no hype and no homage, which makes it much easier to look at this watch and see its merits. Whereas, as I said before, the, the Ranger, which in many ways is kind of similar in being aimed at a very specific market, just didn't quite get the same reception. I think there's a lesson in that for brands to be very careful about how they hype watches because, yes, it can generate a lot of positive buzz, but human beings hate being disappointed. So anyway, that's my quick reaction to the uh, new Tudor Pelagos 39. Be very clear, I should have said this at the beginning, have not been hands-on with this watch, haven't seen it, reserve the right to change absolutely everything I said right now the day I do get it on hand. Anyway, I've been Pete McConville. This is my channel. If you enjoyed my little reaction, love it if you hit the subscribe button and you'll see more of me later. If you've got your ideas about this watch, if you think I'm smoking dope, if you want to say something else, stick it in the comment below and I will almost certainly engage you in conversation. See you later. Bye.